Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, as we come into your presence this morning, we want to thank you, Lord, for, just for joining us. Uh, what right do we have to join ourselves to the creator of the universe? Yet you say that uh, you inherit the, the praises of your people. That you, you're there with us. So thank you for being amongst us this morning. Send your Holy Spirit to guide us as we get through this morning. And get into your word. Sing songs about you, Lord. And I just want to thank you for being with us in Jesus' name. Amen. I have a home prepared where the saints abide. It's holy, the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side. Just over in the glory land. Sunday service, it says 1015, but we start on pastor's time. <laughs> <laughs> I start on Solomon time. We got a problem. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> and then every Sunday we have adult Bible study with Pastor Don. Um, they're still on the book of Mark. Yeah. So. Can, I, can I say something? Sure. Except for next Sunday. We're going to do something just a little bit different. Pastor Wayne 
here a few weeks ago and talked about the land bridge under the Red Sea. What I'm going to do Sunday morning at the Bible study is I'm going to explain that whole thing from a scientific standpoint. And everything that God had to bring together to allow Israel to cross the Red Sea. So that you'll have all the information when anybody ever mentions something, I'll explain it to somebody. Now you know, Richard, every time we put science with the Bible, it just doesn't work. You get a pouch. <laughs> And then every Sunday we have children's ministry with Janice Gould. And every every second Wednesday we have the board of directors meeting, which we had already had. We're gonna be starting a new month here. Second Saturday is men's fellowship. So all you men need to come out, including myself. I know I'm not always good at that. And then the third Saturday is Women's Fellowship, so all you women come out and cook some good food. Maybe I'll stop by. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it takes. <laughs> Can't you tell? <laughs> Every Tuesday is a women's study, but that's been uh, put off because of uh, Carl, you know, with her back and it's held at her place and it's on hold until further notice. Okay, uh, another announcement, the uh, next biggest event, like I have mentioned before coming up, is the Harvest Festival. Um, we're looking for, still looking for volunteers for the Harvest Festival. We're looking for donations as far as candy and games, so please bring them out. And uh, if you haven't been out there in the Harvest Festival to volunteer, it's, a, it's really a whole lot of fun. Bingo night. We have bingo night. Then we have Bingo Night, Saturday, September 3rd. That's next the time. American Legion Post 136 is holding it. Of course, it'll be here at the church. Yeah, yeah. next Saturday. That's next Saturday. Saturday night, yeah. It's a dollar a card per game, so come on out and uh, enjoy uh, playing bingo and hanging out with the American Legion. And it's 50-50. So if yeah. you win, you get, get whatever cards are bought, you're going to get some That's back. it, 50-50. So. With that, I'm going to turn the mic over to Pastor Don for prayer. Thank you so much, Pastor. End of the camera. Right there. No, right there where that X is in the in the concrete. That's where you are, right where that X is. Thank you. <laughs> now you know what I go through. Well, yes, I understand. I mean, you know, the P in front of your name means nothing anymore. No. Nope. Uh, <laughs> Not in this house. You don't even get the respect you're supposed to get. Yeah, stand where you want to stand. Anyways. Uh, Welcome everyone here. I'm glad to see everyone is here. Looks like they're all smiling and chippering. Uh, if not, hang out. You will by the end of the day. And uh, we love you for being here. Jesus loves you for being here. Amen. And we ask that you, uh, we're going to go to prayer for those that have been on the prayer list. And particularly we got praise for Richard Russell, who is, his health is improving. Yay. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to pray for <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you again for the health of Richard Russell and how it is improving. Also, we'd like to pray for Angela Nunez, who's going through radiation treatment and then chemo. We ask that you just give him pray, <clears throat> give them, uh, give her the peace and comfort that she needs as she goes through this time. Be with the family, Father, that they may uh, also have the peace and comfort. I ask that you be with Pastor Bob Nero, uh, who is he healing from COVID, and be with him also as he lost his sister and assistant pastor recently. Just give him the peace and comfort that he needs at this particular time. We ask that you be with the families of Heather Cooper, Clarence Christian, and Carlos Pena, yes. as they have passed recently also. Bob McPherson also. Uh, be with Linda uh, in this time of mourning just the peace and comfort that they're going to need. 
We ask that you be with Jim Geo's nephew who is ill and be with the medical team so that they can diagnose uh, a proper diagnosis for his healing father. Be, I ask that you be with my brother-in-law, Nick. Uh, he's home from the hospital now. I ask you be with my sister in caregiving. Thank you for Warren Dodge being able to go home, Father. Uh, home to home. <laughs> Real home. Father, we just, uh, he has a breathing issues, Father. We just ask that you continue to be with him and heal him. Father, we ask that you be with Sherry's daughter's family who is going through. Going through, going through some issues, we just ask that you give them the peace and the comfort and uh, put people around them that can help them with the issues that they do have, Father. Also, we ask that you be with our military and first responders in the community here, Father, that uh, we are able to come together in the needs of others. We ask that we be in particular with Philip and Sky as they have graduated from uh, their basic training and now are going into their regular training, Father. We ask that you to continue to be with them and protect them from the evil one. Yeah. Father, we raise this whole list of our prayer list, Father, and ask that you grant the prayers that are that are being asked and in your will, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Don't go away. Don't go away. Wow. I said, don't go away. <laughs> no, don't go away. <laughs> Save you a trip back. <clears throat> if your deacons come forward. I'm in. I knew that was coming too. Lord, uh, as we come in, we come in, come into your presence, Lord. We're just going to ask right now, Lord, that uh, you seek out the cheerful givers, and we don't need any uncheerful givers. So don't feel feel like you have to give anything into this as it comes around. Uh, I used to attend a church where the pastor would say, "If you need some, take some out," because that's how much we trust God with our provision. Yes. He'll always give us some. No, don't tell. Don't, <laughs> you see him start Lord, dipping into the tills. <laughs> but Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for that provision that you do give us, Lord, uh, just as we come forward before you this morning. In Jesus' name. That's all right. You're packing. <laughs> Don't tell the Yeah, the, tra the treasure is packing. Watch out for her. She can't hit anything, but she's back. <laughs> she doesn't know how to fire it. You haven't heard any of this on your job. Now what can you say? What really did Barbara? What really did happen to the pastors before me? <laughs> she does own 20 acres <laughs> with an old gold mine on it <laughs> and a tractor he <laughs> kept saying the church didn't need any money <laughs> okay. well, he, he, kept, he kept saying the church didn't need <laughs> Don't anything. Sit. <laughs> Don't sit. Worship team. Worship team, yeah. Thank you. Gene's already got the hole yeah. dug. Steve. Solomon Hodge. Wait for you. I'm going to let it. 
a bad way to hang it. Sorry, I'm going to try to hear it. Oh, Ray's on the phone. Oh 
Open your Bibles, please, to the book of Genesis, chapter. Are the kids going out? Oh, I don't know. Where's Ness? In the room. Oh, kids can be dismissed then. Oh. Bye. <laughs> Are you going too, Perry? You're not going to go to work. I thought you were going to join the kids. Gee, I'm losing half my congregation. <laughs> Genesis chapter 11, verse 27. Genesis chapter 11, verse 27. This is a brief story. Brief story. About a man by the name of Terah. Now Terah was the father of Abraham. And we can learn some things from Mr. Terah. And it's something that applies to us here today. I begin reading, it says, this is the genealogy of Terah. Terah begot Abram, by the way, that be, who became Abraham, Naar and Haran. Haran begot Lot, and Haran died before his father Terah in his native land in Ur of the Chaldeans. Then Abraham and Naar took wives. The names of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of uh, Nahar's wife was Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah and the father of Ishka. You can do a lot of stuff with this uh, genealogy here. We're not going to do that today. But Sarai was barren. She had no child. Here's what we want to get to. 
And Terah took his son Abraham and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, and Abram's son, uh, his son Abram's wife, and they went out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to what is the first mention of this land? To the land of Canaan. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. So the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. The reason I'm reading this story this morning, we're not going to go too deep into uh, all the genealogies or anything like that, because we don't have any pillows. Um, but I, I would like to point something out that this man named Terah, he was obviously a very, very rich man because his son Abraham, of course, inherited uh, what he had. He being the elder son, Abram, was the elder son. And Abram was a very, very rich man. The Bible goes through that many times. So, what possessed Mr. Terah to leave his home in the city of Ur and the Chaldeans and grab his entire family and go to the land of Canaan? What possessed this man to do that? At that time, he, his possessions, he didn't just take a bank card with him. His possessions were thousands and thousands of, of sheep and goats and, and camels and uh, oxen. He had herds of people. He had, uh, Abraham alone at one point had 318 armed people that he could send out to fight. This man had, had a... Uh, he was, he was a very, very wealthy. Probably at the time, he would have been the Fortune 500 of, of the world, if not the Fortune 500 of the world. What possessed him to leave? Well, most scholars agree that something had to happen in his life that would cause him to leave. The very next sentence we, le we read in verse 12 said, Now the Lord had said to Abram, and what did the Lord say to Abram? Get out of your country from your, from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Most people believe that God had this little conversation with Mr. Tara first. Can't prove that. But we do know that he took his family and everything he owned and he headed to the land of Canaan. Now, back in those days, you didn't just cross the Arabian Desert and get to the land of Canaan from Ur, which is right next to uh, Babylon. Uh, you had to go way far north, and then you came, he followed the river north, and, and he followed it back down south, and he came into the land of Canaan. For them to have done this would have been about a two, maybe three year journey, because they can only travel maybe two, three miles per, per day with, with that kind of uh, following, right? But look what happened here. I want to show you something. He got to a place called Haran. I wish I had a map up here. I could show you where Haran is in relation to this travel. <coughs> Haran is exactly halfway to the promised land. <coughs> halfway to the land of Canaan where God was taking Abram. So what happened? Mr. Terah only went halfway. Who went all the way? Abraham. Abraham. Where where do we have the blessings? Do we have a song? Anybody go to into the kids' school and remember that song? Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. We don't do Father Tara. Had many sons. We don't do that. You know why? Because he only went halfway. We call him halfway terror. <laughs> he only went halfway. But I do believe he had the same calling upon him as did his son Abram, who then became renamed, of course, as Abraham. We have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We have the nation of Israel. Through many blessings. We're going to talk today about the calling of God. If you're here today, 
And you said yes to Jesus Christ. Lord, come into my life and be my Lord. Be my Savior. If you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and you've so said, so acknowledged him, you also have a calling on your life. No, I'm not going to reordain. Well, I already ordained Don, but I'm not going to ordain everybody else. In the <coughs> Nobody else can take over the path. But you know what? I believe I am called. I believe that I am called to this fellowship. Trust me, if I wasn't, I wouldn't be here. Amen. Amen. No offense, like y'all. Uh, I believe I'm called. That's why I'm here. I believe I was called to the prison. Uh, and not everybody gets that kind of a, a calling uh, into the ministry or whatever. But did you know that you're all, everybody here in this room, if you are saved, you're in the ministry. Yeah. Bible says you are in the ministry. Yeah. And you're called to be in that ministry. And we're going to talk about that today. And by the way, this is a scripture you cannot get around. Romans 11, 29, it's not printed out for you. It says that the gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. Whether you use them or not doesn't make any difference. They're irrevocable. God gave them to you. They're yours. And all he's really asking is that you use your gifts and use your calling for his glory. Did I move out of the mark? Yes. Oh, Don. They're doing it to me too. No respect. Well, how do we get one of those cameras that follows you around? You'd have one and it followed everybody sitting in the front row. Remember? That one we had that kept moving? Oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> it followed every movement, not just yours. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't that special. Did you know that when Jesus was talking with Peter, and Peter made this big confession, he said, when Jesus said, who do, they, who do the people say I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ. You're the son of the living God. And he made this uh, confession of faith in front of Jesus. And Jesus looked at him and said, uh, wow, on such a faith, on such a statement, I will build my church. Now, you guys have all been here for a few years, if not, renew, whatever. Uh, that word church, you know what it is, right? Mm -hmm. huh? Come on. No doubt. What's, what's the word for church? Called out. Ecclesia. E-K. Up there above that door, we have the E-X, because that replaces the E-K in the Greek. It means out. Out of it. So we are the called out ones. The ones who are called, the called out ones. And the time will come, of course, we all know when when Jesus will come back and he'll call us out. He'll say, wait! Stop bugging these people. Come on up here. We're all looking for that particular time when that happens. We are all called out and we are called by God by the very name which we as the Ecclesia, we as the church. I'll just tie in Yeah, I didn't want to go back to the point of the Bottom line, if you're sitting here in the Ecclesia today, if you're in the called out group, if that's where you want to be, you are also called. Because Jesus says, I will build my called out ones. This is what we are. We are Jesus' Ecclesia. We are Jesus' church. And you're all called. Again, you've been given specific gifts and a specific calling on your life. I know you're sitting and thinking, what is my calling? On Wednesday night, every Wednesday now, we are into a series. And I encourage everybody to come. It's, it's really good. And it, it's called the Engagement Project. We just went through the uh, Truth Project with the same teacher. And now we're into the Engagement Project. Once we know what the truth is, and we studied that for, was it, 12 weeks? Yeah. The truth, the truth, and nothing but the truth for 12 weeks. Now we're into the engagement. What do you do with the truth? Once you have the truth, what do you do? Proclaim it. You gotta proclaim it. Exactly right. So we're in that proclaiming stage of, and that's what we as Christians, 
are called to do. We are called to proclaim. You know, it's interesting. Just the other night we studied with uh, Del, Del Packett, and he, he spoke of how God uses creation to his glory. Is that fair? Does God use what he created for his glory? Well, of course it's fair. He did it. Did you know that uh, it causes God glory when fruits produce trees, which produce more fruit? It's to the glory of God. Did you know it's to God's glory when, when kitties have litters and have more kitties? And yeah. Do you know it, it's also to God's glory when, when uh, people, what was the first thing we were told to do? Multiply. Multiply yeah, go forth and multiply. Yeah. Right? And through that, how many people did God create? <coughs> I want to get there. I want somebody, I want to ask him, how many chickens did you create? Uh, <laughs> two. Two? Two. Uh, how many frogs? Or how many of the, uh, probably two and two and two and two. That's how many went on the ark, right? Yep. Two, plus, two plus two. Male and two by two. Yeah. Male, Male and female. And female. Uh, we, we changed all that, though. We're, we're more woke than that now. We know that's not true. <laughs> Men can now have babies. <laughs> I think. I heard it on the news. <laughs> Depends what station you're in. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Where was that? <laughs> was, was that? X, Y, you're a guy. Oh. X, X, the other sex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the science. Your body has chromosomes. The males have X, Y chromosomes. The females have X, 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 X. Wow. I, I missed all that when I was going to college. I went in as a guy and I came out as a guy. I don't know what happened to me. Uh, <laughs> But God uses our the creation, the very creation of us, to his glory. Now that's in the physical sense, okay? But now let's look at the spiritual sense. What does God want us to do once we are in his kingdom, once we are his people? What's he want us to do? We want, he wants us to multiply. Yes. Yeah. Look what God did with 12 apostles. Turned the world upside down. What could Pastor Wayne do with 50 or 60 people in Yaka? Turn Yaka upside down. We could turn <laughs> Yaka upside down. Build a food pantry. But we have to all know what we're doing. No, we can do more than build a food pantry. <laughs> Although, hey, we are painting the food pantry. I need some grapes, uh, so these things. Um, yeah. Do uh, you know the sizes? Okay. <laughs> and we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> God uses those created in his image to make more people created in his image. Tell me. And guess what? It's all to his glory. Amen. All to his glory. If God wasn't doing things that way, I would have to ask the question, why are we here? Ever wonder, why am I here? If I know that down the road, two, three days from now, or two, three years from now, whatever, uh, I'm going to be with the Lord, what am I doing here right now? If my job isn't to affect, effect other people. If it's not to make more of me, and I'm not talking about more Waynes, I'm talking about more Christians like me. Sadly, well, let me start from scratch. Sandy and I had the opportunity to serve in the prison ministry for almost 20 years. And during that 20 years, we saw literally thousands of people, literally thousands, who gave their life to the Lord. And it is different since I've been here, because I know, I look around, I can't see a single person that I see that most likely has not received Jesus Christ. So I don't give altar calls that frequently. But in a prison where people are coming and going on, every day, every message, 
was an altar call, and people would come forward, they would give their lives to Christ. One of them is my brother-in-law right now, Pastor Doug. Another one is Tracy, that you guys know that we've ordained. This church has ordained, I think, four of those people. Mm -hmm. That we saw come to the Lord are now pastors out there preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of them live in, in the Phoenix area still. And they're doing well. We keep in touch. They call us periodically. Well, we just had... Um, uh, Tracy. Tracy. No, no, Tra Tracy was over with, with Diane. Tim Burns. <coughs> Tim Burns. Well, Tim Burns was actually a pastor. Anyway, <laughs> all over the place. And you see your fruit. You see your fruit of, of your ministry. But we, I don't do that here that much. But you know where I am seeing it? Do you know where I'm seeing it? I'm seeing it on Fridays. Yeah, I'm seeing it. When you people working down there at the pantry are giving out food, what do you do? You start in prayer? Is that how you do it? You yep. start in prayer? And you're handing out food all day long. And people come and wonder why you got food. You're giving out food. And what an opportunity to tell them because this is what Jesus told me to do. So what are you called to do? You people that are giving out food? Give out food! Be all you can be in this man's, God's army and give out food. It's a good ministry. Oh, so, well, you're not called to that. Okay, so you don't do that. Well, what do you do? I don't know what you do. Do you have friends? It keeps moving. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go back to my spot. <laughs> and that's... So why are you here? You know, you know uh, there's a book out called The Purpose Driven Life. It's by Rick Warren. I know Rick Warren has fallen under a lot of criticism. Uh, I want to go there. I love this book. I love the first line in his book. The first line in his book. Because it's all about the purpose driven life. What am I here for? What am I supposed to be doing? And the first line says, it's not about you. You're not here for you. We sometimes think, What's the what is my purpose? You're here because of his glory. You're here to give glory to God. That reason and that reason only is why you're here. So if you have a tool, and that tool was made for a certain purpose, say like a, a crescent wrench, okay? And you use it for a hammer. You know what that does? Ruins the wrench. And ruin <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or anybody ever had I call it a screw chisel? Instead of using a chisel, you use a screwdriver. Oh. Wrong tool for the wrong thing. Uh, it works. <laughs> it works. <laughs> butter knife. <laughs> I like my wife she uses the butter knife for everything for all screws. Doesn't make any difference whether it's Phillips head or. <laughs> but the purpose in your life is something that God designed for you. God designed you for a purpose, and that purpose has very little to do with you. Hmm. You are created to serve God. And when you do that, you find all kinds of things, doors, and everything start opening up. When you leave that old life, that old bar school, when you leave all those things that used to mean so much to so many people, all your old friends, all of a sudden life starts looking different. Romans 8.28, I've printed that out for you here too. No, I'm not going to go into uh, predestination. I want you to read something there with me. Romans 8.28. It's on the boat. And we know that all things work together for good, to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. <clears throat> this is one of the most misunderstood and misused, misappropriated scriptures, I believe, in the entire Bible. Because people always, when they see something go wrong, oh, don't worry, God causes all things to work for the good. That's not true. That's not true. It says, it says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are the called according to his yes. purpose.
If you're a crescent wrench, don't volunteer to be a hammer. If you're a hammer, don't grow, grab a crescent wrench to do your job for you. God's purposed you for a certain thing if you are the called according to his purpose. It reads on, for those for whom he pre-knew, he also predestined, I'm not going there today, okay, <laughs> to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, fruit or new, these he also called. Whom he called, these he justified. Whom he justified, these he glorified. You want to be glorified along with God? How do you do it? You get into his program. His program. Not your program, his program. You know what justified means? Anybody? Just, Just as if you'd never sinned. He's made you holy because he is holy. And he asks that you be holy. Why? Same reason. Because he is holy. When you get on board with your creator, it, it's kind of like uh, taking your car, if it's a Toyota, in, into a GM dealership. It'd be better if you took it to the Toyota dealership, the manufacturers of the car. Stick with the manufacturer. He's got the plan to fix you. He's got the idea. Now listen, there's something I want to talk about. Here, here's a scripture here. It says, so the last will be first, and the first will be last, for many are called, but few are chosen. I came real close to leaving that scripture out because, again, it's a misunderstood scripture. What's that talking about? You all all been called, but only a certain amount of people are chosen? That's really not the way it works. If you're called, you're called. If, I'm sorry. That's if, a, I just can't get that in. If you're called, you're called. And if God chooses you for something else, that's one thing. But this scripture comes to us in a discussion about uh, a man who had a vineyard went out and hired a bunch of people to come in and work, and he gave the same people uh, the same wage for a denarius for a day's wage. And at the end of the days, the people that he uh, called in last, he gave them the same denarius for a day's wage. And the people complained and said, how can you do that? How can you give the same amount to, the same, to a different person who only worked a few hours? And they grumbled. And of course, the the master, who is of course Jesus in this parable, uh, said, hey, the first will be last and the last will be first. In other words, for many were called, but few were chosen. He ended by saying that. He's talking about the difference between Israel and the Gentile nation. We came in after, did we not? We came in after Israel. Israel was called first, and there's a scripture over in Romans that talks also about this scripture being the difference between Israel and the Gentiles. So Israel is called, and few are chosen out of Israel, but all of us are called to be in the Christian because we are the called. And we are the chosen. I'm going to prove that here because I want you to go to Revelation 17, 14. The next scripture down. This is straight out of Revelation. And this is about the people who will be with Jesus in the last days. There's going to be a great period of distress coming upon this whole world. We call it the Great Tribulation. And at the end of that tribulation, Jesus returns. Chapter 17, 14 records this. That there's going to be a bunch of people coming against Jesus. These people will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. And those who are with him are what? The called, the chosen, and the faithful. So you see, the called are the chosen. So I just wanted to dispel that one, one scripture, because people use it all the time, well, I'm called, but I'm not chosen. You are called, and you are chosen. 
Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. You say, well, isn't that the same thing? No. 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 No, I, I think there are certain people that are chosen for certain things mm -hmm. to do. And when that happens, God will, will empower you, tell you what you're supposed to be doing. You'll know what you're supposed to be doing. But every last person in this room is called. Because that is the purpose of your existence. To multiply. <coughs> to multiply. I know a lot of you are getting too old to multiply. <laughs> <laughs> Because we are the called, we are the chosen, and I don't know if we're the faithful or not. I don't know why he put us in there. If I, if we're faithful at all, it's only because Jesus Christ has pushed us across that finish line. Amen. 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 But that's what he calls us. It's kind of neat to think that he thinks we're so faithful. One of my favorite scriptures, it's actually standing that scripture. It was given to the nation of Israel. But it was also given to us. For God says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Says, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me, and you'll come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Did you know that God's got a plan for you? Mm -hmm. But if you're not choosing to be in that plan, where does that leave you? Leave you planless. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I want to be in that number. You know that song, when the saints come marching, let me be yes. in that number? Yes. That's what this is talking about. God's got a plan for you, and he wants you to be in that number. He wants you to seek out this plan that he's got. It says, when you seek me, when you, you will find me when you seek for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Okay. Now for the big question. Okay to be called. What are you called to do? <coughs> what are you called to do? <laughs> How do you do that? You got to come take my job? No. Don's job? No. Maybe your job. You're a deacon. <laughs> Don't have to do that. No. But you are called. That's right. You're called to increase his glory. Right? Mm -hmm. When I was a, a baby Christian, I was sort of put on the spot right off the bat. As you know, I was locked up in prison, and I had just given my life to the Lord. I didn't know anything about anything. I, I didn't know anything about terror. I didn't know anything about God having plans for me. I didn't know anything about being called or not called. All I could tell people was, I believed. And you've all heard my song, I believe you have, not get one of the tapes of Sandy. You know, from the moment I believed, well, why did I believe? I don't know why I believed. All of a sudden, I believed. Let's suppose that that's the sum total of everything you know about God's Word, is that you believe. Because we've all been there. Right? Now, that's, that's no excuse to say, well, I don't need to know anymore, because that's not true. Learning all about God's Word has just been uh, fun through my whole life. It, it's fun to learn what God has to say to us as He guides us. But let's just say that that's where you're at right now. That all you know is that you believe. 
Ever talk to somebody and they go, I believe in God. Well, do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you? Oh, I don't know if I believe that or not. Well, they don't really believe. Right? Because you have to confess with your mouth that Jesus is what. Why did I believe that? I didn't know anything about it, but I confessed it. I've told you this over and over. That, and at some point, we had to confess that. Maybe we had a little bit of foreknowledge. I don't know where you came from, but I knew nothing. But I did play the guitar. Okay? And I knew one Christian song. And all of a sudden, I found myself in front of audiences people talking about Jesus and playing my guitar to songs I'd never heard before. And then people would come to me. Steve, want to give me a hand here? People would, would come to me and they ask me questions. And I said, I, I, I don't know. You know, I felt like a signpost. Because all I was was just a signpost. And, and the sign was saying, this way to Jesus. But when they would ask me questions, I didn't know what to tell them. And believe it or not, the first song I ever wrote was out of that frustration. <laughs> You have come to see me here this morning. You look like you've lost your best friend. You ask me about truth, and what do I think you should do? But some good advice is all I can lend. All the world is heavy on your shoulders. You seem to have somehow lost your way. You don't know your own will. Life is all of him. What you need, my friend, is to be saved. That's all I knew. That was the sum total of everything I knew about Christ. But saving is a job for a savior. There's so very little I can do. I can reach out my hand, call you my friend. I can even tell you how much I love you. But saving is a job for a savior. And there's not much I can do about your life. But I'll tell you what to say. I'll even deal with you. Pray, but the rest is up to Jesus Christ. He is the one with all the answers. He can turn the darkness into light. He can wash your sins if you'll just trust in Him. And He can put joy back in your life. I can give advice, but he'll come in your life. Then only he can change the life you lead. Because saving is a job for a savior. There is so very little I can do. I can reach out my hand, call you my friend. I can even tell you how much I love you. But saving is a job for a Savior. And there's not much I can do about your life. But I'll tell you what to say. I'll even deal with you to pray. For the rest is up to Jesus Christ. I said the rest is up to Jesus Christ. See, I was a scientist. And after 30 years of studying and preaching, all kinds of stuff, evangelizing, 
I'm still just a signpost. And you're a signpost. And every interaction that you have with everybody 24-7, you're to be that signpost. Because saving is a job for a savior. You can't do anything except be that signpost. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Come on up here, Don. <laughs> A signpost. <laughs> Better not say one way, right? Yeah. Well, there is only one way. That's right. And that's Jesus Christ. Wednesday night, this last Wednesday night, we learned about script. You know, movie script? Yep. Yeah. We all have a script, our own script. Yeah. The issue with that is sometimes we aren't in sync with yeah. Jesus yeah. and God's script. So... Being a signpost leads us to alter our script. We need to include Christ in our script, our plan. We cannot go our own way. We have to go God's way. And we have to, being a signpost means that we are showing others the way. And we have to remember that in our script. I mean, that was a good lesson last Wednesday. Yes, and uh, I encourage everyone to get a chance to, to review that one again. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we come before you now to thank you so much for allowing us to understand what you're talking about as far as your glory, Father. We are here because of you. We are here to glorify you, Father. Thank you so much for Jesus and what he has done so that we can be justified in your glory, Father. As we go out into the community, we ask that you be with us. Help us to be the signposts that we are to be. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.